So it's Toby from Rider Cam TV. Welcome to another video. And today we're going to fit some extras onto the bike, and I'm going to fit this Wonderlish screen onto the bike. Hopefully you can see that on the video. And I'm going to bring it round here because you can see on top of the original how much bigger, how much taller, and how much wider it is. Yeah. So the new screen, this one here, the Wonderlish screen. You can see how much bigger, and if I put them together, see how much taller. It's a good four inches taller. And then if I turn it round slightly, so you can see I put it both on the points, you can see how much lower down it fans out, but it actually comes in and doesn't, it doesn't fold in as much as this one. So in order to fit that Wonderlist screen, the wider and the taller one, we need this one here, this little gadget, which is just a stabiliser. And that's literally really easy to fit. It's two bolts that go through here. And those two bolts are located actually in the bike, one there and one there. And the whole bracket will basically sit on the inside and then fit on the top onto the existing factory fitted fitment for the screen. And that will enable me to use the factory fitted knob on the right hand side of the screen to lower and raise the screen but it can also enable me to tighten it in with a full range of movements just to stop this this wobble and although there's no wobble on the original screen with the higher and wider screen without this you will get a bit of wobble so it just takes that away so so that we can fit the new screen and the new stabilizer we've got to remove the original screen we're going to remove that bolt there at the end of my torque wrench and the bolt the other side and that's a T25 torque head screw and it's just literally as easy as unscrewing it and just be careful that you don't lose the screw of course and it's a little bit fiddly because you've got to kind of work your way in between everything So to get the screen off, now we've removed those two bolts, literally, I'd say hold on to the bar with one hand and just pull down. And it's a, re a really good little mechanism and you can see that that little lip fits into that little hole. So when you go and replace it, it literally clips in and then it screws on. So we're going to take the screws out or the bolts out for the stabiliser. You can see that there's two nuts there and that's the bolts that you've got to remove so let's, we'll just remove both of those and the only reason I've got a spanner there is I can't remember whether they'll actually come off yeah they will they, they are these nuts are loose on the end so just be careful not to lose them You know, I don't think I could be a mechanic. You've got to have about 12 million hands with the dexterity of a, a spider. So our bracket literally fits in behind flush with the already flush with this bracket and then you just match up the holes and push it through. Now they do give you screws that are on there because they need to be a little bit longer. So make sure that you put the right ones on. and they're allen keys which is a real pain so now that's through it's just a case of getting those two nuts
and screwing it back on the other side. Because it's the same nut that came originally on the bike, so it's just the screw that's been changed. Now I haven't done them up so that they're amazingly tight but just tight enough so that they're tight to hand because they're not holding anything on other than you know I suppose 600 pounds worth of sat nav. <laughs> so now that we've put the stabilizing bolt on what we need to do is take these brackets off the original screen and put them on the new one and it really is really simple you've got four four screws there and I'm going to replace three. I'm not going to replace that one because the bracket, the stabilizing bracket came with its own bolt that's slightly longer and needs to go in there. So we'll remove them. So I've removed one, removed two screws. Now when you take them off, if you can see there, it's got an L on the plastic and on this one it's got an R on the plastic. Left and right couldn't be easier, but to save yourself the hassle, take that from the front and put that with it and put it aside. So on the left of the bike, I talk from experience because I got it mixed up the first time. But you'll notice that these have got little bungs in there as well. We won't be using those bungs. It comes the new kit for the new screen comes with its own. So just leave them in there so you don't use, lose them. put it on the right. So on this screen comes with handy instructions and you get eight o-rings to replace the original o-rings that are in the original screen because they won't fit into this screen but handily they give you two sizes. So I put those o-rings on there now hopefully you can see them just in there so I'm going to just put them in through the hole so it just rests against it and they will push themselves into the hole and then I've got the smaller ones that I'm just going to rest in a, around the top and then place this one onto the top and then put the screws in and it is a little bit fiddly but just be careful of what you're putting your screen on the floor or where you're putting the screen on because it does it does scratch really easily. And I'm not going to do it until I can't tighten it anymore. It's just sort of hand tight. So we're just going to, now that we've fitted the brackets on, minus that one. So don't don't put in the comment that I forgot that. I forgot it for a sec, not put it in for a specific reason. Because this one from the bracket needs a longer bolt. And that goes straight in through there. So we're just going to fit it on these little nibs here. 
these little nibs here basically go into these little holes. And again with the original bolts, just going into hold the screen on. Normally I drop these about a hundred times when I'm doing it. it. Must be Mark, the cameraman, willing me not to drop it. Is that right, Mark? I'm just waiting for it all to come off. <laughs> waiting for it all to come off. Right, so this one up here, you can see that I've not fitted anything yet because they give you a tiny little bolt that goes in and you just literally locate it and then bolt that in but the um, original isn't long enough to get right through the whole screen so they provide you with a rather tacky looking bolt and there it is so with this one unscrewed and I've put a couple of modifications on there just so that it it held it tighter I noticed without these plastic spacers that I managed to find in the garage that every now and then this would start moving but with that I can screw it right in and get enough pressure on it that that will hold it and it won't move and it stops the wobble hardly any wobble where in comparison to not having it which is quite a difference, certainly a difference when you're riding. Right, so with it, just bear in mind that this stabiliser works, but if you do want to adjust your screen, make sure you undo it first, he says. Make sure it's undone so that you've got the movement, and then just use your hand as normal to move the screen. And as you can see, if I go the other side of the bike, the bracket follows where the screen is going to be and it takes it from its full extent all the way to the bottom without damaging any of the, the factory fitted kit. Right, there is one downside or even a plus side to this, depends which way you look at it. So I've not got the sat nav on and I need to fit the sat nav on. Now that I've got my bracket and my new screen, it doesn't alter the, the depth from or the amount of space from the sat nav to the screen. However, it does mean that you can't get your key in to unlock it. Now I think that that's probably a good security feature by default because somebody can't get something long in there and bend it out. We all know that they can and they will if they want to, but it will cause them more problems. So on the key, I tend to just bend it round, then it will turn and I can fit the sat nav in the usual way. And then lock it and pull the key out. So it's still locked, you still can get to it, but just be met be mindful that that is in the way of your key so you won't be able to just stick it in. So this is much better. The Wunderlich Ergo screen purchased from Nippy Normans but you can purchase them from various various places. This one costs about £125 and for me I find that it was well worth it. I'm doing just over 70 miles an hour now, or 70 miles an hour, and I've got no wind in my face. I've got clear visibility. I've got no wind on my shoulders. It's gonna make, for me, touring much more pleasurable. 
the old screen tended to, even on the high setting and no matter where I put it, gave me a face full of wind and certainly when, when, we were, when I was riding this morning before we fitted it, it was three degrees and I couldn't ride with my visor open because my, I couldn't see where I was going, my eyes kept watering up with the cold. But with this screen, I'm getting a tiny bit of wind in my face, but just it's almost as if somebody's just gently blowing across your face. So just keeping you awake, good to uh, open your visor to get a bit of fresh air if you've had it shut for a while and you're on a long ride. But on the whole, really, really pleased with this Thunderlick ergo screen so thanks for watching if you've liked our video give it a great thumbs up it does help us an awful lot and remember to hit that subscribe button and we'll see you in the next one ride safe